2, which which then tells us, I suppose, that mu1 minus mu2 must be equal to 0, yeah, when we bring the mu2 over to the left-hand side. Uh, so under the null hypothesis, mu1 minus mu2 is 0, so what we're going to do is we're going to take away 0 here, which has no effect on the numerator. Okay? And that needs to be divided by the square root of, here's our first ratio that we calculated, so it's 0 0.42, plus our second ratio that we calculated, 1.29, and it's the square root of this particular value here, so it's the square root of this. Okay. So when I do this here, I end up with a t-statistic, which is equal to, I suppose we have minus 6 in the numerator, and the square root, what we'd have here, is the square root of 0.42 plus 1.29, gives us a value of approximately uh, 1.31, so that's 1.31, which gives us, we have minus 6 divided by 1.31, which gives us a test statistic of 4.58, or minus 4.58. Okay, now that we've calculated our test statistic, we proceed to calculate our degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom in this case is equal to, once again, our two ratios. The first ratio plus the second ratio to be squared. So it's 0 0.42 plus 1.29, and that needs to be squared. That needs to be divided by the first ratio, squared, which is 0 0.42 to be squared, divided by the first sample size, minus 1, which is 12 minus 1, which is 11, plus the second ratio to be squared, which is 1.29 to be squared, divided by the second sample size, minus 1, which is to be divided by 13. Okay? Now, when I do this out on the calculator, uh, we have 0.42 plus 1.29 gives us a value. And when I square that, I end up with a value of 2.924. Uh, so let's say 2.9241. And that's to be divided by, when I do these two, it's, I suppose it's 0.42 squared divided by 11 plus it's 1.29 squared divided by 13 which gives us a value of uh, 0 0.1440. So our degrees of freedom in this particular situation, our degrees of freedom uh, for this particular test is 2.9241 divided by 0.144, which gives a value of approximately 20.3. So approximately 20.3. And don't forget, uh, we're going to round here to the nearest number, so it's approximately equal to 20, yeah? We're pulling it back a bit, yeah, okay? The critical region, yeah? But nothing to worry about here. So our two important uh, statistics, yeah, is our test statistic, which is minus 1.48, sorry, minus uh, 4.58, and our degrees of freedom, okay? So once we've calculated that, we can proceed now to calculate the critical values of our test, which is step five in this particular procedure. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the critical values okay, for our test. So our critical values, which is a uh, step, which is step four. So step four, we're going to define our critical values. So our critical values. Uh, we're using a t-test, so it's modeled by a t-distribution. Okay, so don't forget that we have it's modeled by a t-distribution, something like this. Uh, it's a two-tailed test based on the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to split the significance and put half it into the right tail and half it into the left tail. So this is alpha over 2, and this is alpha over 2, which is 0 0.025, and that's 0 0.025 also. Okay, so what we need to figure out is the t distribution tables, yeah, okay. So we need to go to the t distribution tables uh, and find the critical values. Okay, let's say C1 and C2, and we'll use the positive critical value here, the critical value that has 0 0.025 of the area to the right hand side. Okay, so when we go to our tables, the area that we have is the area is 0 0.025. Our degrees of freedom are listed down this column. Our degrees of freedom are 20 we triangulate in our critical value is going to be so let's have a look at this here our critical value for our t distribution and um, so we have 20 degrees of freedom so we're down the row that's labeled 20 the area in the right hand tail is 0 0.025 so our critical value is 2.086 so 2.086 
Uh, so what we know is that this value here is 2.086, so this value over here is minus 2.086. Okay? I think what's what's pretty clear is that our test statistic, which is minus 4.58, okay, our test statistic is in the left-hand tail. Our t is equal to minus 4.58, okay? So once again, what we're saying is this, is that if the null hypothesis is true, and that mu1 is equal to mu2, okay, well then the probability of us observing a test statistic as extreme as this, okay, uh, as extreme as in as far away in the left hand direction, okay, uh, is at most 0 0.025. In other words, the probability is very small that we would observe this if this in fact is the case. Which means that the alternative must have a greater probability associated with it, which means that the probability of this of observing this, if this is true here, the second, uh, the alternative, it uh, must be very, very large. Uh, so we reject. So we move from here to here to a rejection. Okay. Uh, so we reject rejection. Okay. Uh, and now we have our decision. Step five, our decision. And our decision is clearly. Now we throw away the sign. We use the absolute values of them. Okay, so clearly the absolute value over t is bigger than the absolute value over c. What I mean by that is 4.58 is bigger than 2.086, and as such, as such, we reject h0 in favor in favor of ha at the 5% significance level significance level okay and i suppose now the most important thing is the inferential step and we infer okay, that the samples okay, have been drawn from populations have been drawn from populations with different population means have been drawn from populations populations with different means okay and that's important that's our inferential step with different different mean values or different means okay and we're 95 percent confident about that we might be wrong and we sh we're controlling for how often we'd be wrong but we might be wrong we might be wrong five percent of the time uh, okay guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, I hope this uh, short video in relation to how to undertake an independent samples t-test, assuming, assuming unequal population variances, okay, I hope this short video uh, was helpful. Okay, thank you, bye bye.